hello guys i hope you are doing fine and having a great time today i want to make a video about xfem um, fatigue crack propagation using direct cyclic approach and um, basically i have developed this model by asking other people by discussing it by finalizing it through the help of other people and basically this is what i developed for myself but i would like to show here how it's done so basically initially we have a block where i have pinned it from this side pinned it from this side and i have applied force on this side um, and then here is an initially defined crack so this is an initially defined crack seam using xfem method and when i run this simulation you can see that with each cycle the crack is propagating uh, and uh, this is what i this is what i wanted to accomplish for quite a long time and eventually it was possible and therefore i am i want to make a video which is related to this so you can see that the crack is propagating with every cycle and it depends on the material properties the applied load and other factors which are actually physically involved in the uh, material failure that how it happens so to make this simulation what i am doing basically is i am defining two things so one is a deformable uh, 2d deformable um, um, line simple line which we will use as a crack and then the other is a uh, specimen so um, here in this case it is 2d brick and then what i am defining is as a material the material is important because initially i'm just defining it as an elastic material with uh, 200 uh, gigapascals of young modulus 0.3 poisons ratio and the density is 7800 kilogram per meter cube and then we have to define maximum principal stress damage you can find this here damage for ductile materials no oh damage for traction separation loss so maximum principal stress damage so this one and then we are defining this maximum principal stress damage value of you can read here a certain amount uh, whichever the material is capable of um, capable of which it, at, at which maximum principal stress it fails and then we define sub options of damage evolution and damage sp stabilization by um, selecting energy linear degradation is maximum mixed mode behavior is power law and mixed mode ratio is energy and the power is one and then i am basically defining normal uh, mode fracture energy shear mode fracture energy of first direction and shear mode fracture energy of second direction all um, 42 uh, and 200 so and these are all in um, joules so 42 kil 42.2 kilojoules 42.2 kilojoules 42.2 kilojoules and then damage stabilization viscosity coefficient i'm giving in as 1 e minus 5 i'm not really sure about the significance of these values from where to get them and how to apply them this is what i'm working on now um, uh, so to basically calibrate our model according to what we observe experimentally this is my challenge now and um, if you find information regarding these points or you find a useful literature where i can get these values for certain materials i would be really happy but yeah just to give you an idea so this is how i am defining it uh, the material which is the most important thing and uh, then i'm defining a section of steel which is solid homogeneous material i have selected as steel and then i am assembling it so there is only one instance this one and it has certain features and then we have partition face um, and then in the engineering features we have this defined track so the region is picked 
by selecting this line and then we have the crack location which is this point and then we have specify contact property which is interaction property which is basically empty um, yeah and the other thing is I have defined a bottom surface and a top surface to define boundary conditions and in the um, in the step I have defined a direct cyclic step we can also take a look at this <coughs> the cycle time period is one um, incrementation is increment size is 0.1 maximum number of rotation is 20 initial maximum and increment number of four year terms is 25 25 and 5 and then for the fatigue i want to include low cycle fatigue analysis with all these attributes you can define your own um, and um, then what is happening is i'm defining field output with failure and fracture to check when the crack is will initiate and propagate and also history output um, I don't think we can define it for I, I we, we can define it for the crack and the number of contours is let's say five or something and then we can also collect J integral values but here we are collecting energy for the whole model uh, interaction property which we d which we used in the XFEM crack definition you can see that it is uh, empty and uh, I have defined an amplitude which is zero zero amplitude at zero time one amplitude at zero zero point five and zero at one again and then I'm defining the boundary conditions which is bottom is fixed in vertical direction and then back is fixed in uh, vertical direction and bottom is fixed in horizontal direction and then i'm applying load on the top with the amplitude which we defined uh, the load is around um, 500 um, kilo newton so something like that if I translate these um, units um, and yeah when I run the simulation we um, get these results so um, this is the initial crack which we defined and then when we run the simulation after each step you can see that the crack is propagating in multiple cycles through each element and reaching at a certain element and then growing in this direction which is similar to what we observe experimentally so yeah um, the simulation is running I just wanted to share it with you and now the next uh, step for me is to um, optimize this simulation so to say so um, I can get results similar to what we observe experimentally during fatigue analysis. So yeah, I hope you liked the video and um, uh, I hope that you learned something. If you find ways on how to uh, make it better or find the parameters for specific materials for example stainless steel titanium or um, super alloys uh, i'll be happy to know do let me know and uh, yeah happy simulating see you guys around and bye